Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to, 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 to the Enchanted Butterfly Garden Podcast. Introducing your host, the goddess Angel. Let's go. Hello and welcome back to my show. Today is August 25th, and you know what that means. It's my birthday! Woohoo! So I am turning 35. I wish I was turning 25. 35 this year, and I have decided that I want to give myself everything I want. And what is that? You guessed it a podcast. So here we are. I've got my setup. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to share what I know and love with you guys. And I. I can't wait to explore the garden with you wherever you are and whatever garden you're in or not in um, or wish to be in or are in in your mind or in the astral realm. You never know. There's plenty of gardens for us to take part in. So I am going to start this episode off with a tarot reading and it's going to be a one card draw and we're going to Draw from the Crystal Unicorn Tarot by Pamela Chen. This was the first deck I ever used and also someone who has mentored me um, created this deck. So I'm very close to it and I am excited for what it has to offer. So let's shuffle these cards and see what we got. The Ace of Cups. Absolutely wonderful. The Ace of Cups is a New Beginnings card. Um, which is perfect for a new podcast and a new year and a new birthday, a new outlook, a new mindset, a new life, all of the above, a new day for anyone else who's listening. Um, There's all kinds of stuff that comes from the Ace of Cups, so I'm really excited about that one. Um, The second deck I'm going to be using is an Oracle deck called the Green Witch Oracle, and it is by Sherilyn Darcy. And I really like this one because it has a lot of pretty artwork and some spells and some really cool things that you can learn about plants that I didn't know. There's some plants that I didn't even know about in here. So I'm excited about that one. So let's try and see what we pull out of this Oracle deck. Shuffle them cards. And we have Healing. So this one has a geranium on it, and this is also a great card for me to pull because healing is exactly what we're here for. So because I want to provide as much healing as possible, I'm really glad to pull this card right now because it also shows a geranium, which means that I might actually start growing one of those. I've never grown a geranium before. I've also not gardened very much before, but that's my new journey right now to help myself heal um, and grow and love on something that doesn't require too much effort, I hope. I say that lightly because I I want my plants to live. (laughs) Um, But this this healing and this geranium, I think, are going to be a big part of this podcast now because of how relevant they are to the message that I'm trying to convey. So that's perfect for the two cards that I drew from these two decks. That's one of the things I love about tarot is that no matter what you think you're going to get out of the deck, you pick a card and you it's like the card that you most expect you should get, but it's also the card that you don't think you're going to get because you're like, well, how is that going to happen? But then it comes out and you're like, oh, well, that makes perfect sense and then you're, you're thinking like oh well I should have just already known that I didn't even need the deck but the deck helps bring it right to you so you don't have to do it on your own but what fun would that be because doing tarot and pulling cards is one of my favorite things to do I mean it's it's fun it's exciting sometimes it's not but <laughs> sometimes you can get some cards but then you know what your next path is so it works out either way Um, Between the tarot and the moon, you know, those are my two go-to things to help me get through my life. And that brings me to my next point, and that's the moon and why I decided to create this podcast at this time and release it on this date because everything I do is intentional. And I was reading, um, actually, a book, Pulling Your Own Strings, um, and I didn't even get past the foreword because it was such a good book. But he says in the beginning... um, that he's challenging the me I am to become the me I choose to be, which was really cool because 
That's exactly what I want to do. That's what I want all of us to do. Everything I do is intentional. And I want to challenge the me I am to become the me I choose to be. And the me I choose to be has a podcast, which is awesome. But I also choose to use the moon and the phase that it's in to help me plan out the things that I want to accomplish in my life. It's a great way to do things and it's a great way to ensure success of your projects, especially when you place all that energy into them and the success of them that you can use the energy from the moon and what it's doing to propel your projects forward to help you along. I mean, why not take advantage of what Mother Nature offers us to use, like the energy and power in the moon? It's one of my favorite things. Have you ever sat outside and just stared at the moon? It's literally one of my favorite things to do. The other way I love to plan, and this has a lot to do with why I launched this podcast today, and that is numerology. And we won't go too far into the depths of numerology because we'll literally be stuck in the rabbit hole for a long time. I get stuck in the rabbit hole of numerology on multiple different occasions <laughs> every day. So that's why we won't go too far into it right now. However, today is August 25th, 2023. And if you figure out the day, um, the number is 22, which normally would be four. But because it's a master number, we won't simplify that one. But that is one of the master numbers, which is a fantastic day to release this show, which also is my birthday. So I feel like this is one of the best birthday dates that I could ever have and one of the best ones that I could, you know, really chase after my dreams today. So I use numerology for so many things throughout my day and my life, but I feel like the universe uses the numbers and I'm just kind of along for the ride. (laughs) Um, Numbers appear everywhere for me. And obviously, there are numbers everywhere. What I mean is synchronicities, master numbers, double numbers, angel numbers. I feel like I almost communicate with numbers, by numbers. I take screenshots of numbers all day because it's just so frequent that I can't ignore it. And I love that. It makes me happy to see 1111 or 222 when, you know, I'm going on about my day. And numbers just really tell you a lot about your life and your path and your journey. And it's really exciting to use that information to help you succeed at what you dream about and what you want to manifest in your life. Because if not, what are we doing here? You know, if we don't have dreams and we don't want to make them happen, then what purpose do we have? But then when you know your purpose and you know what you want to do, then the best way to to get that accomplishment is to use everything around you to help you and numbers do that for you so you can know exactly what time what day what year you know you should start this project based on your numerology report you also can probably notice that throughout other people's lives when you look at how they carry themselves and how they do things for their own manifestations so if you look at someone who's really into you know, synchronicities, then sometimes they'll even post their videos to be 33 minutes and 33 seconds just to make sure they're including that number in what they're doing because they're intentionally using the things around them to make things happen. And that's exactly what I was talking about being everything I do is intentional. Because if I use the things around me, then I'm intentionally making something come to fruition which is exactly what I want and what I want for everyone. So my goal is to help people get to the point where they can have whatever they want. And you can accomplish that by using the numbers around you and multiple other ways. Um, So we've already talked about the moon and numerology being two ways that you can help yourself get to the point where you want to be or not even goal-wise, just life-wise, okay? So if you want to be a happier and healthier person, then use the moon planning and the numerology to bring happiness and health into your life um, by following the same guidelines. It doesn't have to do with starting your own business or even, you know, reaching for really extremely high goals. It could be as simple as, Should I take a rest day today or should I really go out and grind because that's what 
the the universe is telling me to do. And listening to the universe can be done in many different ways. It doesn't have to be either of those ways. Um, you can also use crystals to bring messages from other places also. And you can use them in your everyday life for healing and for attracting certain things, manifesting for protection. Um, some people use them in spell work, things like that. But they are also important to your healing and your growth. So you can kind of see the different ways you can manifest not just self-love and healing but other things and desires that you have for your life. The other thing that I really enjoy doing to promote healing but also to help the earth which desperately needs our help right now is um, gardening which is new for me because I have always cursed myself with the black thumb because I can kill any plant on accident and I absolutely love plants and I try so hard but they just like I love them so much that they can't handle it <laughs> and that's my conclusion however um, as of late I have been talking about being more positive about my ability to grow plants and I have incorporated some different techniques to help me grow a garden because I desperately want to be able to provide food for myself and others. I think that gardening is such a great therapy that I never knew about that I'm so excited I've discovered. It might have taken me 35 years, but I'm very excited about this journey and I am learning and growing through it and now my first okra plant has sprouted and I'm very excited. I also have some microgreens that have sprouted that are beautiful and a few other plants that were donated because they were on the way to the trash bin, sadly, that I have revived, which I'm actually really excited about because I went from not being able to keep a plant alive to reviving a plant that was almost dead. So I do have a green thumb, it's just hiding somewhere. The one thing I am good with, though, that does also thrive in the garden is insects and that's something that interests me a lot it's one of my biggest passions I can find a bug and I'm sure it will go home with me or I will borrow it for a few minutes so that I can create happiness for myself and for the insect my mom always says where's angel I know she's probably got a bug and I've run my sister out of the house multiple times carrying random insects into the house. And it's quite hysterical, actually. I find it fun. They don't think it's that fun, but it keeps me entertained. I also like to observe insects and see how they interact with nature. I like to play with roly-polies. I like to dig in the dirt. I like to watch the spiders build webs. I love to listen to the crickets. I love to play with the butterflies and watch the bees and insects are a huge part of my life so if you know me you know I love bugs I probably have them around me or on me I've raised hissing cockroaches I've raised worms I'm still raising worms right now because I'm building a compost bin for my garden which ties my two hobbies together because that's the way I want to and choose to heal myself and create peace in my life that I desperately need. The best way to do that, the best way to create that peace in your life that you desperately need is to have fun. If you're not having fun in your life, then you're not healing yourself. When I say fun, I mean go run around in the park. Go play on the slide. Think of the things that you would have loved to do when you were a child that you didn't get to do or that you did get to do that you just had so much fun that you couldn't wait until the next time you got to do that and then go do that have fun act like a child the phrase that comes out of my mouth a lot during a day is I'm a child what can I say I do it all the time and why because that helps me I have ADHD I can't keep my mind on a topic for very long and I probably have jumped around in this episode a million times but that's what makes it fun and that's what makes it mine and so if you like to listen to me ramble around on different topics and put them together somehow and make it sound great then this is the right place for you because I love to have fun 
So now you know a few of the things that fuel my passion for the Enchanted Butterfly Garden and how I manifested this space for us to come together. So make sure you come back and listen so that we can go over these great ways to heal and dive into the topics I love further and more in depth together so we can all have the great life of a butterfly which consists of freedom and beauty so bright that you bring beauty to the things around you, like the flowers, or you draw people to you because you have such good energy that people flock to you. What a beautiful life to hold. So let's use this sacred space that we're creating together by listening to this podcast and create something so beautiful that everyone around wants to be part of it. Well, now that we've made it through this first episode, I hope that you guys enjoyed my birthday gift to myself and thank you for coming and listening to what I have to say. It has been an amazing experience putting out this first episode and I look forward to listening for your presence next time.